Hey guys, welcome to the day two MCAT exam from 2017. As usual, how this video is going to work is that um, I'm going to go through each question. I'd recommend you guys to pause uh, at the start of each question and try the question out by yourself. See how far you can actually go with the question and then just follow through with my answers. I will cover um, what you need to do for Achieve Merit and Excellence. I will try my best guys because sometimes in algebra you get multiple um, answers and which means multiple grades. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Okay, so the first question we have here is um, we've been asked to work out what the A is. X and Y has actually been given to us. So it's a nice simple one to start off with uh, because you've got X is equal to 2 and then Y is equal to 4. So you got 2 times 4 plus 5 times Y squared, which is just 4 squared. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 5 times 4 squared is 16 and then you got 8 plus 80 which equals 288. Nice easy one to start off this question, um, this paper with and achieve for this question. Okay next question. Okay so the second question we have is we basically got a question that says solve. So we got to factorize this and then solve the question. So the way I go about it is um, I've got 3 times negative 16 which equals to negative 48. So basically I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 48 and it also adds up to positive 8. Um, and in this case my two numbers are going to be positive 12 and negative 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that um, 8x into 12x and negative 4x. And then I've got minus 16 equals to 0. So at this point I've got to split this into two parts, differentiate the first two terms on the left hand side. So on the left hand side I've got 3 and x is a common factor, so I can write that as 3x and x plus 4. And on the right hand side I've got negative 4 as a common factor, so I can write this as negative 4 and x plus 4, factorize it, equals to 0. So at this point x plus 4 is a common factor, so I can take it out. And what I'm left over with is 3x minus 4, which is basically the 3x this comes from there, minus 4 comes from there, and of course this is equal to 0. Okay, so the next part is remember that you've got to actually solve for this question. So that means you've either got x plus 4 is equal to 0, or 3x minus 4 is equal to 0. And the first instance, x is equal to minus 4, because we're and then in the other instance you've got 3x is equal to positive 4 and then x is equal to 4 divided by positive 3. So those are your two answers. So in terms of grades you need both of these answers for a merit. Uh, if you factorize the quadratic which is getting up to here you are looking at an achieved um, and if you solve this but you actually had an incorrect factorization you could possibly get achieved as well okay for the wrong factorization okay that's it for this little question we we'll go to the next one guys so question C here it's um, what we got is we've got a couple of rectangles put together and it's asking for what's the perimeter of the plan in terms of X so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what this bottom length is first now know that the distance from here to here is 2x minus 1 so that means we've got 2x minus 1 here at the bottom and the distance from here to here is x, which means the green part here is going to be x. Once we get that, the second part we need to do is we can actually say the orange part, take away the red part, is actually going to give us the yellow line there. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So the orange part here is 2x plus 4. And we got to take away the red part. Make sure you put that in the bracket, which is x minus 1. So what we're going to end up with is 2x plus 4 minus x plus 1. And that simplifies to 2x, sorry, not 2x. That simplifies to x plus 5. Okay, now that x plus 5 is what this length here is. And I think at this point you've got all the lengths that you actually need to find the perimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this purple point here and I'm going to go clockwise. Okay, 
So that means I got the orange length there first, which is 2x plus 4. Then I got the light blue length, which is 2x minus 1. Then I've got that yellow looking one, which is x plus 5. Then I've got the red one. Nope, sorry, I've got the green one, plus x. Then I've got the red one, which is x minus 1. Then I've got the green one again, which is plus x. And then I've got the light blue one, which is 2x minus 1. So now it's just a matter of simplifying this. So I've got 2x, 4x, 5x, 6x, 7x, 8x, 10x. And then my number is 4, minus 1 is 3, plus 5 is 8, minus 1 is 7. Okay, I think I just kind of lost track of my numbers. I'm going to try that again. All right, so we got 4, minus 1 is 3, plus 1 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7, and then 7 minus 1 is 6. So that is what my perimeter should look like. So now, I'm not going to lie, guys. When I found out that this particular question was actually worth an excellence, I was a bit of a, bit, a, bit of a shock because I thought this was this probably not more than a merit. Um, but yeah, according to this particular exam, you are going to get an excellence if you actually answer this correct. Now, in terms of achieved, like there's just so many possibilities to get an achieved in this question. Um, it's just too much to actually go through down here. There's like three possibilities for you to get achieved. And for, mer for merit, you could actually get a wrong answer. But if you kind of stuffed up one of the answers, you could still get a merit for it. So yeah, quite a few things that you can actually do. And I think the simplest one to kind of do that is I'm just going to go through one of the points for achieve. Uh, if you actually get the x plus 5, which is right here, uh, you can actually get an achieved for a merit if you found the perimeter, but um, one, using one incorrect length, you can get a merit as well. So I'm going to leave it with this qu question. And I'm going to go to the next one here. Okay, so with the next one, what we've been asked to do is to try and work out what the value of x is if the area is actually 146 centimeters. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this um, into two rectangles. So I'm going to have a blue rectangle, all right? And the blue rectangle's base is x and the height is x minus 1. So the area is going to be x times x minus 1. Then I'm going to have the black triangle, uh, sorry, black rectangle, I should have said, sorry, not triangle. The black rectangle has a base of 2x minus 1 multiplied by height, which is 2x plus 4. So those are my two formulas. And when I expand them and add them up, that should equal to 146. So I'm going to kind of try and work here, guys, but just be bear, bear with me in this one. So you got 2x minus 1 multiplied by 2x plus 4. And then you've got plus x times x minus 1. And all of this is equal to 146. So expand the brackets out. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. And then 2x times 4 is 8x. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. And then on this side, I've got plus x squared minus x equals 146. Simplifying this, I've got 5x squared. 8x minus 2x is 6x. 6x minus x is 5x. And then I've got minus 4 there by itself, which equals to 146. Yay, let's drag it along here. So we've got 5x squared plus 5x minus 4. I'm going to bring the 146 to the uh, left-hand side, which means it's going to become minus 146. And all of that is equal to 0. So simplifying this, I've got 5x squared plus 5x minus 150 equals to 0. Now looking at all the coefficients, I can see that 5 is a common factor, so I can take it out. And I've got x squared plus x minus 30 equals to 0. And then when I take the 5 to the opposite side, it becomes 0 divided by 5, which is just 0. So I've got a nice quadratic now, x squared plus x minus 30 equals to 0. So factorizing this, I've got two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and add up to 1. So I've got x plus 6, x minus 5. Therefore, I can say that x plus 6 equals to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. Now, in the first case, I've got x equals negative 6. And in the second case, I've got x equals to 5. Now, remember, this is lengths you're dealing with. And I'm looking at this particular one here. Now, at that point, you have to say x can't be negative. 
So therefore, x has to equal 5. And I think the question is just asking what is the value of x and nothing more. Okay, so what do you get in terms of grades? Excellence for the first one. Uh, if you get x equals to 5, then you get, uh, then you get excellence. All right. For merit, basically this question says that you need three or more procedures for achieved, which means, let me just show you guys where, where all you can get achieved. Now, if you set up the equation, that's one achieved. If you consistently expands and simplifies, so expand it properly, you get an achieved. Simplify properly, which is up to here, that's another achieved. And then you can solve it. This is on the quadratic. That's another achieved. So if you get, I think, three achieves, and in this question it actually counts as a merit. All right, let's go to the next question. Okay, so in this question, what we have is, uh, let's just play, break down each of those lines. The first line is Ricky thinks of a number n, so that's just going to be n right there. When Ricky's number is squared, so that's n and it's squared, he gets k less than n plus 4. So that means n plus 4 minus k. And then the third line is when Ricky's number is cubed, so n cubed, the answer is m times n. Okay, so this is what we have right now. Now this particular question is asking you to give an expression for k in terms of m only. All right, let's try this out. So I guess I've got to use that second line first. Now the second line, it actually says n squared equals n plus 4 minus k. So I need to actually get rid of this n and I need to get rid of this n squared and then rearrange so k is by itself. That's how I'm going to do it. Now, if you look at the third equation, which is this one here, it says n cubed equals to m times n. So I can rearrange this and I can get n cubed divided by n and that's equal to m so because n cubed divided by n is just n squared i can actually say that n squared is equal to m okay let me just, i'm just going to put that in purple there now because n squared equals to m i can go back to my first equation and i can write this as this m is equal to capital n plus 4 minus k now I need to get rid of n by itself. And to do that, I'm going to continue on with this right from here. Because if n squared equals m, then I can say n is equal to square root of m. So that means when I go back to my original equation, I've got m equals to n, which happens to be square root of m plus 4 and minus k. So at this point, I want k by itself. So I'm going to rearrange. I'm going to take k to the other side which makes it positive and I've got k plus m square root of m plus 4 and at this point I can write k by itself because I could actually take m to the opposite side when it'll become minus m and there right there guys is the answer for this particular question so for an award of excellence you need to get this last one correct for merit, it's one of those weird questions where you can actually get three achieves and get a, a merit. So what do you get for this correct writing of expression? So doing this gets you an achieved. Without n squared writing, n equals to this. So this gets you an achieved right here. And there's one more thing, which is where you're writing a correct expression without n squared. So again, I'd actually ask you guys to just check the answers answer schedule online just to see um, what are the options are there all right guys that's basically it for this question let's go to the next one okay so question two we have a area of a rectangle can be represented by this state the length and width of this rectangle okay so what do we got to do we got to factorize this um, so basically we've got 3 times negative 32 which is going to equal negative 96 and basically we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 96 and adds up to negative 4 which is right there okay now let's say i'm just going to sidetrack a little bit here now let's say you're trying to figure this out and you got no idea how to do 96 times 2 oh, well how to split 92 num let me rephrase you got no idea how to find what two numbers multiply to 96 and add up to 4 
what I generally tend to do is I, I just write the number as positive as it. I don't worry about the symbols. Just write it as positive. 96 can be written as 48 times 2. Now 48 could be written as 24 times 2. And I've still got this 2 left over here. Uh, let me just rewrite that in a different color so you can kind of make sense. 24 times 2. And then, of course, the times 2 from there. So this is still equal to 90, 96. 24 could be split up into 12 times 2. And I've still got the remaining 2s right there. Now, I'm going to kind of stop here because the reason is I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 96 and add up to 4. At the moment, I can kind of see here I've got a 12 right there. And then these three numbers here multiply to 8. That means 12 times 8 is 96. So that means I could actually have this as negative 12 times 8 and negative 12 plus 8 would equal negative 4. Hopefully that made sense, guys, but let's go back to the original question. So we got 3x squared minus 12x plus 8x and minus 32. So at this point, I got to factorize partially. So I've got 3x as a common factor in the first one. So I've got x minus 4. And then here I've got 8 as a common factor and I've got x minus 4. Factorizing this further, I've got x minus 4 multiplied by 3x plus 8. Now at this point, I can simply state if I want to that this is length and width. And it doesn't matter which one, which way it goes around because remember rectangle, if you turn it 90 degrees around, your length becomes the height and the base becomes, sorry, the base becomes the height and the height becomes the base. So it doesn't matter how you actually write this. Okay, so that means this question right here is worth an achieve. Okay, now it has a second part to it. The second part is it asks, given that this quadratic expression, blah, 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 what would be the possible values of x? Now we've already factorized this, okay? We factorize this to be x minus 4 and 3x plus 8. So think about it like this. Um, what is the maximum area you could actually have? I mean, not maximum area, sorry. What's the minimum area for this? The minimum area that you can actually get for this is actually 0. So I'm going to put that, I'm going to put this equal to 0 and I'm going to solve for this equation. Okay? So that means I've got x minus 4 equals to 0 or 3x plus 8 equals to 0. Now, in the first one, I've got x is equal to positive 4. And then in the second one, I've got x is equal to, uh, sorry, I've got 3x is equal to negative 8. And then x is equal to negative 8 divided by 3. So these are my two measurements, okay? The problem is it's asking what is the po possible values of x. Now you can't have, you can't actually have x is equal to negative eight over three because you know it's it's not going to work because one of your answers then uh, will end up being zero and then the other other side of the length will actually become negative. Okay, so that means you can't actually have x equals to negative eight over three. But what you could ha have is you could actually have x equals to like four and above, that's what you're looking for. Are you looking for, actually, no, you're not looking for four and above. Because if you put four, then your area is actually gonna become zero because four minus four is zero. However, if you put a number that's actually above four, so say like 4.1, then this, air, this thing would actually work. But anything below four, what happens is the area becomes negative and anything at four, the area is zero. Anything above four, the answer is actually gonna work out for you. So you just need to check a little statement, say x is bigger than 4 as length and area has to be positive. All right, and that gets you a merit. As for the achieved, um, you can basically say that um, giving two solutions, so achieved is getting your one solution here and your second solution. Uh, and if you if you factorized it incorrectly in the first part and you did this part correctly then you get an achieve for this as well okay so it's one of those um, mixed up questions okay so let's have a look at the next question all right so what we have here is we got a simultaneous equations um, in the last day one exam paper I actually did by elimination I think but in this one I'm actually going to show you guys using substitution so my first equation is 
x minus 5y plus 15 equals to 0. And I'm going to rearrange it so that x is by itself, which means negative 5y will change to positive 5y, and positive 15 will change to negative 15. So once I've got x equals to 5y minus 15, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to substitute x in that second equation. So my second equation right now is negative 5x plus y plus 21 equals to 0. But because x is equal to 5y minus 15, I'm going to replace that here with 5y minus 15. And then I've got plus y plus 21 equals to 0. So expanding the brackets, negative 5 times 5y is negative 25y. And then negative 5 times negative 15 is positive 75 plus y and plus 21 equals to 0. So I got negative 25 plus y, which is negative 24y. 75 and 21 makes it 96, and that's equal to 0. So rearranging this, I've got negative 24y equals 0. Take away 96 is negative 96. And then y is equal to negative 96 divided by negative 24. And I can say, therefore, y is equal to 4. Now, if y is equal to 4, I can go back to my x equation, which I did by itself. So I've got 5y minus 15, which means x is equal to 5 multiplied by 4 minus 15. And then x is equal to 20. Take away 15. x is equal to 5. Now, the question is asking you, what is x plus y? So we're going to say, therefore, x plus y equals 5 plus 4, and that equals to 9. So, grades-wise, getting the final answer is excellence. Uh, solving for one variable could get you a merit. So if you just calculate um, y, then you, can, then you can actually get a merit for it. For achieved, there's uh, lots and lots of... Um, there's about three or four that you can actually potentially do to get it uh, achieved. So again, it's just a combination of like whether you're substituting right or if you did by elimination, did you do it right? And then are you actually, even if you make a slight mistake, are you getting a consistent solution? So yeah, that's another, another way that you could potentially do as well. Okay, so all right, that's basically it for this question. We go to the next one. Okay, so what we've got is, um, in this particular question, we've got Jane is planning to plan fence an area for a pet lamb. Now, originally Jane's father said he wants to make it a square with side X, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down on this side, I'm going to put down what the father actually is going to do. So for the father, he made it into a square with side length of X. So that means his made a square. So his area of his rectangle is going to be x times x, which is x squared. Now Jane decides, so we got Jane on this side. She decides to make it a rectangle with the length 5 meters longer than x and the width 2 meters wider than x. So her rectangle, I mean, let me actually do this, sorry. So father made a square, right, with x and x, while Jane actually makes a rectangle, which is x plus 5 and x plus 2. Now the father comes and says that Jane's pen is 24 meters squared larger than what he had planned. So this is what the father actually originally planned to make. This is equal to whatever he decided to make plus 24. And we're trying to figure out what the area of the pen that Jane's father had to plan to make. So we're trying to figure out the area of this thing right here. So we know that Jane's rectangle we've got base times height. So I'm going to write that down. X plus 5 times X plus 2. And that's equal to Jane's father's square, which is x times x, which is x squared, plus 24. So expand those brackets. So I'm going to get x squared plus 2x plus 5x plus 10 equals x squared plus 24. Now, because I've got x squareds on both sides, I can cancel them out. Because you know, if I bring the x squared to the other side, it's going to be minus. Then what I've left over with is 7x plus 10 equals to 24. And then I've got 7x is equal to 24, taking the 10 to the other side, minus 10. And I've got 7x is equal to 14. And then x is equal to 14 divided by 7, which gives me 
x is equal to 2. But if you go back to the original question, the question is asking you for the area of the father's rectangle, sorry, square, uh, area of father's square is base times side, which is 4 times 4, sorry, 2 times 2, my bad, 2 times 2, and that is equal to 4. Okay. Now, it's a good idea to just double check your answers. If it's 4, then here I've got 4 squared, which is 16. 16 plus 24 equals to 40. And then if I have 4 here, uh, then base would become Base will become 9, and then 4 plus, and then I've got 4 plus 2 here, which is 6. And then if you go 9 times 6, oh wow, I just realized my mistake. Sorry guys, I'm going to redo that golden part again. Apologies, apologies, jeez. Sunday, Sunday afternoon, getting late. Okay, we're going to try that again. Apologies about that. What we have is actually x is equal to 2, right? So it's actually 2 squared plus 24, which is equal to 4 plus 24, which is 28. And then here on your base, you got 2 plus 5, which is 7. 2 plus 2 is 4. And 7 times 4 equals to 28. So that's how you prove it right. Do apologize about the mistake. Okay, so uh, correct solution of 4 is equal to excellence. Now the part in golden is just to double check uh, in gold is just to double check your answers to see if you're correct. As for achieved, if you set this part here, you get an achieved. Uh, simplifying to get a linear equation could get you an achieved here. And then you could also get an achieved for solving the equation. And if you get three of this or two or more, you can actually get a merit as well. Okay, let's go to the next question. And I do apologize about the mistake there. All right, so what we've got is uh, this question here. Is we've got somebody going on a Peter is going on a holiday for five weeks. Uh, looks after pet dogs and cats, blah, blah, blah. Uh, when Peter goes on holiday, his neighbor is going to feed the 13 pets he's looking after. All right, so the guy actually looks after cats and dogs. Uh, cats and dogs. So cats, C. And then we're going to go dogs with green. So the total number of animals that Peter actually has is 13. So if you go C plus D, that's equal to 13. Now it also sends, says Peter spends a total of $445 on the food for the pets before he leaves. It says on average the cost for food for a week is 5 bucks for a cat. So that means we've got 5C plus $9 for the dog. Whoa, sorry about that. $9 for the dog, and that's equal to... Now, here's the one thing that you need to be careful about. That $445 is for five weeks. The $5 and the $9 is for one week, which means we've actually got to go $445 divided by five for this particular one, okay? So that means we can rewrite that second equation as 5C plus 9d and that's equal to $89 okay so now we can do this by elimination or substitution um, what should we do what should we do I'm going to do elimination guys so I'm going to write that second equation which is uh, let's just do this well actually no the second equation is already there I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to multiply everything in it by 5 and then I'm going to rewrite it here at the bottom here so 5 times C is 5C 5 times D is 5D 5 times 13 is 65 so at this point what I can do is I can subtract the second equation from the first equation so I'm going to put a minus 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 so when I do this I've got 5C take away 5C is 0 9 take away 5D is 4D and then 89 take away 65 is 24. So I've got 4D is equal to 24, which means D is equal to 24 divided by 4. And so the number of dogs here is going to be that there's six dogs. 
Now the question says how many cats and how many dogs did Peter have for the neighbor to feed? So if the dogs is six, we also know that C plus D is equal to 13, because remember there's 13 animals in total, which means we've got C plus six is equal to 13, C is equal to 13 minus six, and then we can say that C is equal to seven. So we're gonna write a little statement, uh, six dogs and seven cats. Okay, so grades wise, this is an excellence right here. If you consistently find the number of cats and dogs, I don't get it, it's like, that's already found. Anyway, that's what the, the exam schedule says. Uh, correctly establish the equation in one variable. So maybe doing something like this could get you a merit. Uh, as for achieved, uh, calculates the number of cats or dogs. Okay, so achieved could be something like this here. And if you go on to actually correctly answer the, like if you get, if you put the wrong equation, but you get an answer, but if you're working out is correct, then you can get an achieved for it. All right, guys, let's go to the next question. Okay, so question three here, we've been asked to rearrange and have m by itself. So I'm going to write the equation, guys. I've got n is equal to 9m squared minus 16. Rearranging it, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get rid of the 16 first. So it's going to become n plus 16, and that's equal to 9m squared. And then m squared equals n plus 16 divided by positive 9, then I can say that m is equal to square root of n plus 16 over 9. Now, just a bit of an idea in maths is that when you square root a number, you could have plus or minus in it. However, in this particular question, even if you forget the plus or minus, you could still get an achieved. All right, let's go to the next question. Okay, now this type of question here, one suggestion I'm going to give you guys. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a bit of a shortcut of how to do this. All right. It's a bit of a cheeky way to do it, but trust me, it will work in this. Um, and it's always to have a look at which is the easiest one to factorize. Now, if you look at the denominator, the denominator is a bit, okay, it's one of those weird ones, right? The one where x squared is greater than one. But if you look at the numerator, you could actually factorize it quite simply by looking at it and going, well, 6x is a common factor. All right. So that means you can write this as 6x and then x minus 3. And then now you've got to factorize the bottom. Now I'm going to show you guys this two ways, right? The first method is I'm going to have to try and factorize this the long way that we've kind of known before. So we're looking for 2 times 3, which is 6. So basically we're looking for two numbers that multi multiply to 6 and add up to negative 7. All right, I'm talking about this negative 7 right there. So in this case, we're going to get negative 6 and negative 1. All right, that means um, that quadratic there is going to look like this. And before I actually write that up, I'm going to, I need a bit more space, guys. I'm going to work in the bottom there. So I'm going to write this as 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. This could be broken down as 2x squared minus 6x minus 1x plus 3. And then I've got to do the partial fraction factorizing. So I'm going to get 2x as a common factor in the first one, which means I've got x minus 3. And then negative 1 is a common factor in this one to get x minus 3. And then I can rewrite this as 2x minus 1 times x minus 3. And that's what I'm going to write here underneath this fraction. And because x minus 3 is a common factor for both of them, I've got, I've simplified this to be 6x over 2x minus 1. So grades wise, uh, you have to get the final part correct for merit. For achieved, you could have factorized the numerator or the denominator. Um, and, but then if you made a mistake, but you still consistently simplify the answer, you can get an achieved as well. So I want to show you guys the shortcut of doing this. What I would do is like this. See, I would, you know, the top part, I would actually write down 6x times x minus 3. All right. Now, just think about this. This is a question that is definitely been, you know, it's going to have to factorize and you're going to have a common factor in one of them. Now, if you think about this in the numerator right now, you got two factors. You got 6x and x minus 3. Now, if you look at the numbers below, you got 2x squared. So there's literally 
very low chance that you're going to get 6x as a common factor in the denominator, which means x minus 3 has to be one of the factors for the denominator. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to put down x minus 3. Now, if I do that, I need to look at what my coefficient for the quadratic is. So basically, I know that this number and whatever this number here is, it's got to multiply to 2x squared. That means I can actually write this as 2x because 2x times x is 2x squared. And then the next thing is that this number and this number, whatever that is, has to multiply to positive 3. So negative 3 times 1 is positive 3. Now, if you want to double check whether you've done the right thing or wrong, you could actually try and expand this. So if I take 2x plus 1 and then x minus 3, now this is just a waste of time, but you can still do it. You're going to get 2x squared minus 6x. Oh, sorry, I just realized what my mistake is. My bad. Sorry, guys. That's not plus 1. That's minus 1. Yeah, see, simple mistakes, man. Simple mistakes. Got to concentrate on these things. That's what I would say to you guys as well. Concentrate. Negative x and then plus 3. And of course, that's going to factorize, sorry, expand to 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Once you get this, because you've actually kind of know this, you can cancel out each other, and you got 6x over 2x minus 1. Yeah, so much for a shortcut. Eh? I made a lovely mistake there, but trust me, it still works. Okay, let's go to the next question. All right, this is one of my favorite questions. You know, last year I thought this question would not actually come, but they always seem to surprise us. So what we got is 5x squared minus 6 is greater than 5x. The first thing, guys, to realize is your powers, you can actually get rid of the 5s and just rewrite it just with the, with the powers. So that means you're going to end up with x squared minus 6 is greater than x. And then what you need to do is you need to rearrange this. So you're going to get x squared. When x comes to this side, it becomes minus x. Minus 6 is greater than 0. Okay. I'd ask you guys to factorize this. So we're basically looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add up to negative 1. So you basically got negative 3 and you've got positive 2. Now, this is where people start getting really, really kind of confused and they start doing silly things okay because i've seen people kind of go i'm going to show you what the wrong answer looks like first so this is what people did too i'm going to write that down wrong this is what people do x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 is greater than 0 then what they do is x minus 3 is greater than 0 or x plus 2 is greater than 0 and they get x is greater than positive 3 and x is greater than negative 2 and they actually leave the answer like this okay this is not correct guys okay the reason is you kind of need to go back to this equation right here see how you got an x squared now the x squared graph looks like this I'm not even going to put the y-axis i know that this particular x squared graph is going to look like this where i've got two of these points these green points right here all right i need to figure out what those two points now along this line i know that y is equal to zero so what I'm going to do is I'm going to re rewrite this equation as x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals to 0, which means I've got x minus 3 equals to 0 or x plus 2 equals to 0. So in my first case, I've got x equals positive 3. In my second case, I've got x equals negative 2. What that means is this right here. That point there is negative 2. That point there is positive 3. And if you go back to your quadratic, you are looking for a zone that is greater than zero now along this orange line the y value is zero but anything above the orange line is positive or bigger than zero so that means the zone that you're looking for in this case is basically this and this so if you want to write that down as your final answer you're going to get x has to be less than negative two and x has to be greater than three Okay, but if you look at this wrong answer that I showed you guys earlier before, that is correct, but that's actually not correct. Okay, so it's really important that whenever you guys get this type of question, is that draw that little parabola and trust me, it will help you guys out. So, grades, excellence for this. 
Merit is consistent solution to an equation, an equation giving one correct endpoint. So if you had done this thing right here, you could get a merit. So not really an excellence, but you know, one symbol, you switch the symbol correctly and you get an excellence. Um, if you do this part and you kind of stop, you can still get a merit for it. Achieved is relationship given for exponents. So just this part right here, you could get an achieved. Uh, and factorize, so you could do get an achieved for this line here. So quite a few few things that you could potentially do. All right, let's go to the next question. Okay, so this question right here, what we've got is obviously an exponents question, and we've got that four right there. So one thing I'd suggest to you guys is get into the habit of writing four to the power of one, which is four. Four squared is 16. Four to the power of three is 64. Four to the power of four, well, if you can try and remember it, but otherwise, 256. So what we're going to do first is we're going to get rid of that 16. Uh, we're going to get rid of the 16 by replacing it with 4 squared. So we're going to get 4 squared multiplied by 4 to the power of x minus 5 greater than 65. And then remember this rule here. If you have a to the power of m times n, you could write that as a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, I can write this as 4 to the power of x minus 5 plus 2, and that has to be greater than 65. Simplifying this, I've got 4 to the power of x minus 3 has to be greater than 65. Okay, so here's how you go about doing this question, all right? I'm going to replace this x minus 3. No, no I'm not going to replace it. I'm going to put this with a purple box. Yeah, let's do it the purple box way. So I need to figure out what is the, I'm going to just kind of sidetrack on this question. I'm going to do this, 4 to the power of purple box and greater than 65. So I kind of need to go, what's the, like, remember this has to be whole numbers, right? What's the number I could put in the purple box so that this blue statement here is true? Now, I can't put 3. Because if I put 3, then that's only, like, see, if I put 3, then that becomes 64 is greater than 65. Well, that's not true. That's false. So the next thing I can try is 4 to the power of, what can I put in the purple box? That it's going to be bigger than 65. I'm going to try the next number, which is 4. And then 4 to the power of 4, well, that's 256. So I can say 256 is bigger than 65. That's true. What else could I try? I could try 5 because 5, 4 to the power of 5, whatever that number is, it's going to be bigger than 65. So that means the purple box cannot be 3. Okay? I hope that makes sense. That means the purple box has to be uh, equal to 4 or bigger than, if that makes sense. It, it can be 4, it can be 5, 6, 7, and it just keeps going. All right? So I can say that the purple box has to be greater than or equal to 4. But what I also know is that the purple box is actually x minus 3. Because remember, that's what I did here. So I can rewrite this as x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 4. So rearranging this, I've got x is equal to greater than or equal to 4 plus 3. So my final answer in this question is x has to be greater than or equal to 7. So doing this question all the way down to the bottom here gets you an excellence. As for achieved, um, correct. So, sorry, for merit, you need two things. Uh, two things that you've done for achieved. So basically, this could get you an achieved. Consistent equating of indices, guessing and checking with no algebraic working could get you an achieved. Uh, yeah. So it's just a couple of other things which I would recommend you guys to actually have a look at the schedule for. So anyway, that's basically it for this particular question here. Let's go to the next one. All right, guys, so we've got this question here where A and B are two consecutive even numbers, okay? So that means, oh, wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. So that means I can write it like this, A and B, but because they're consecutive numbers, I can say if A is the first number, the second number is going to be A plus 2. Now, the question says if C is blah, 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 give the C in terms of A. So I've got C equals B over A minus a over b but because i know that b is equal to a plus 2 i can substitute that in this equation 
So I'm going to get B, and I'm going to instead of B, I'm going to write that as A plus 2. So I've got A plus 2 divided by A minus A over A plus 2. Okay, so I need to combine this to make into one, um, how do I say, one fraction. So I'm going to cross multiply. You could do cross multiplication or I could just find the common factor. In this case, the denominators multiplying each other. So that means I got to multiply this side by A and A. And then this one here, I'm going to get rid of that equal sign. I'm going to multiply by A plus 2 and A plus 2. So when I do this, I get a plus 2 squared minus a squared, and the whole thing is divided by a multiplied by a plus 2. So I need to work out the numerator. So in the numerator, I've got a plus 2 times a plus 2 minus a squared, and the whole thing is over a times a plus 2. So, expand the quadratic, I get a squared plus 2a plus 2a plus 4 minus a squared, and that whole thing is divided by a times a plus 2. So now the two a squareds there kind of disappear, and I've got 2a plus 2a, which is equals to 4a. So I get 4a plus 4 divided by a times a plus 2. Now, because I've got 4a plus 4, I could actually factorize this, but I don't want to factorize it fully as 4a plus 4. I'm just going to factorize it as 2 times 2a plus 2 divided by a times a plus 2. So at this point, what I can say is uh, numerator, I'm not going to write in green, sorry. I can say that numerator is even because it's getting multiplied by 2 and then denominator is even because when you multiply two even numbers final number should be even Okay, you need to give that explanation, guys. Basically, doing that gets you an excellence. For merit, you need three procedures of achieved. So that means you could get an achieved for this expression for two consecutive odd uh, even numbers. Then correct simplification of a fraction. So you could actually get simplification of fraction. I guess that's going down all the way to here. Expansion of numerator could get you an achieved. Simplification of numerator could get achieved. So something like this, something here, we're expanding it. So quite a few things that you can actually do for achieved. But then for merit, you need like three of these achieves. All right, folks, that's basically it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, pop it in the comment section below. I think the MCAT is a couple of days away. Uh, for those of you guys that are taking it, good luck. Just make sure you answer every question. Do not leave the paper empty. Even if it's like a question that you've got no idea, but you kind of know something about it, just try it because you never know what you, what you can actually get achieved for in the MCAT. Okay, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.